Hello, my name is Rick Willits and I'm chairman of the Dairy School Board. And this is another in a series of programs uh, designed to inform you about some of the changes that we're planning for the Dairy School District. Uh, we had an earlier program that talked about our school calendar and how in the future we plan to have half of our schools run on a year-round basis and the other half of our schools run on the traditional school year. This program is going to concentrate on how we're going to reorganize our schools and their curriculum. This is a three-year project. Uh, nothing will be done overnight, but I want to give you some of the ideas that we're talking about now so that when you attend meetings that we will be having at the various schools, you'll be better informed and better able to ask questions and give us input as to uh, this whole reorganization. Right now, the way the dairy school system is run is we have four schools that are set up readiness through sixth grade. We have Floyd School, which is readiness through uh, third grade, and uh, junior high school at Hood, grades seven and eight. We plan to change that so that we will have two schools which will house only readiness first and second grade. We'll call them our primary schools. We'll have two schools that will house grades three, four, and five. They will be our intermediate schools. And we will have one large middle school for grades six, seven, and eight. How the middle school will be set up is a topic for a separate program, but it will be a large facility, but really two schools sharing some core facilities. That will be at a another time when we'll get to the details of that. Why do we want to do this? Well, we think that the primary schools, readiness first and second grade, should have a very narrow focus. This is to introduce the child to school and to learning. They come to us as a non-learner, and one of the prime goals is to make them a learner. We want to make sure that first school experience is a good one, so that as they proceed through the system, they feel good about school and coming to school. And we want to make sure that every child has the basic skills needed to succeed as they go through the system. And we feel by taking readiness first and second graders and putting them into one building, we can concentrate on those goals so that we know for sure that the energy of the school is being focused to making it a good experience for that child who's entering school for the first time, making sure that child succeeds, making sure that child is reading and doing basic arithmetic at grade level, and making sure that child knows that they are doing what they should be and are on schedule so that as they proceed through the system, they have a solid foundation upon which to build. We feel the best way to do that is to put all the kids of that grade level in one building. Actually, to back up, we'll be doing it in two schools. One of those two schools that will house readiness first and second grade will run on a traditional school year, start in September and in June. One of those two schools that will house readiness first and second graders will run on our new 45-15 year-round school. Both will have the same goals, will be doing the same work, it's just whether the school year will be spread out more or more concentrated. That will be the option of the parent. Um, we have several programs already in effect in our schools that would adapt themselves very nicely to working in a school that only has readiness first and second graders. We have a reading recovery program that is designed to take a child who's reading in the lower 20% of first grade and with intensive one-on-one -on -one work bring that child up to grade level. This program has achieved enormous success around the country and around the world. And they are finding that when a child has been entered in reading recovery and has reached grade level, they never fall back. If we can accomplish that with every child by second grade, we will have set them all on a, a course for success at our higher levels. We think we can do that better if all the children are in our two schools rather than spread out over the entire system. At Grinnell School this past several years, they have piloted a, a program of their own design, Levelized Reading, which is designed on a larger scale than Reading Recovery. Reading Recovery deals with the lower 20%, but making everyone read at grade level by the end of third grade. And they do this by taking their large number of students, Grinnell has one of our larger early uh, age populations, and moving them about in order to maximize their success at their particular level. If a child is reading at a higher level than another child, they will be allowed to move past. But every child is aimed towards grade level by the end of grade three. And this type of program has uh, 
a lot going for it. The early grades are perhaps the most important grades. If at the end of first or second grade a child has not experienced success, has not achieved the basics, then third and fourth and fifth grade are going to be not as pleasant and by seventh grade we're going to be having troubles and trying remedial reading and remedial math when a problem could have been solved early on, perhaps before it even became a problem. Uh, the rest of the school could focus its energy on these early learners. The library could be set up with books that would be appropriate for that age without having to cater to the tastes of a, a first grader and a sixth grader. The art, music, and phys ed program, again, could be tailored for the early learners rather than having to have equipment and programs both during school and after school to satisfy sixth graders, uh, 11 years old, and, and first graders who are six years old. We think by putting early, all the early learners together, we can accomplish a lot more because we will be focusing on them. We will also have in the building a greater number of experts on earlier education. That in each building now we have several first grade teachers, several second grade teachers, but we also have third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And a sixth grader is a different animal compared to a first grader. If more of our first and second grade teachers were together in the same building, they could feed off of one another, teach each other, uh, explain what they're doing that works and what doesn't work, and we'd have a greater success rate because more people would be working together. When we move up to the intermediate schools, grades three, four, five, this is where we start to look more at a reading for content, that in the early grades, they're reading to read. And now in third, fourth, and fifth grade, they're reading social studies, they're reading science, they're reading history or geography. And we can start to concentrate on that higher level of learning, more abstract concepts. We're going that one step beyond the basics. And again, the library can be designed to have books, encyclopedias, reference materials that are appropriate for grades three, four, five, not having to have some of the earlier uh, type materials. The PE program can start to move towards a, an intramural type situation. Uh, we would have two schools, again, one operating year-round, one operating on the traditional schedule. Most likely Grinnell and Hood School would be our intermediates, and they share common playing fields. They both have a, a good-sized gym. We could set up intramural programs uh, to augment the standard phys ed. The music would start in towards chorus and band rather than just basic music, rhythms and tones and, and uh, of the type of thing that you do in first and second grade. And again, the teachers would be experts at dealing with grades three, four, and five. And we wouldn't have people that range from all the way from a, a readiness child uh, all the way through a sixth grader. We would probably look for a, a greater sense of school responsibility in a third, fourth, and fifth grade intermediate school. Uh, perhaps a student council where the children take a more active part in many of the decisions made about their lives. That's not necessarily appropriate for first and second graders. They might not even understand what's going on, but at third, fourth, fifth, it would be much more appropriate. And we could set that up and it could be a big part of the school without uh, leaving out the younger kids who would be there as we are now. We would also look at this age level, grades three, four, and five, to start preparing them for the middle school. Our middle school now, we call it our junior high, but it's truly a middle school, operates on a teen concept. And we wish to continue that in our new middle schools for grades six, seven, and eight. The teen concept tends to be a, a smaller school within a larger school, allowing the kids to move about within a, a smaller area, but getting them prepared eventually for high school where it's a much bigger place and they move around a little bit more. We, we start looking at preparing the kids for the middle school concept and then the middle school preparing them for the high school. Uh, this would be more easily accomplished, again, if we had only grades three, four, and five. Uh, the whole idea of breaking the kids up into three groups is to allow us to focus on the needs of those three groups without having to have a school that deals with everybody. The library, the principals, the guidance, the teachers, phys ed, art, music, all of the things that the teachers and the students have to uh, deal with during the day can be focused for their particular age group rather than the wide range as we have now. The middle school, grades six, seven, and eight, a separate program, we'll talk about that because we have some very 
interesting ideas for how we'd like to operate that, what it would be like both physically and academically. So we'll leave that. But there are some general areas to consider at all levels. Uh, when we look at a, a new school or a new school organization, do we want perhaps to have some intergrade teaching? Do we want to take some third graders and put them in with fourth graders because it's appropriate for them? Not all day, not every subject, here and there. Is it appropriate for first and second graders? Maybe, maybe not. If, one, if at one level we think it is, we'll do it. Is it appropriate for sixth and seventh graders? Maybe. That's one of the things we're going to consider. Uh, the science program. We should perhaps gear it towards more of an experiential thing, hands-on. Learn science by doing it. Is that appropriate at grade five? Maybe. We're going to talk about that and decide. Is it appropriate at grade three? Yes, maybe. Grade six and seven? Almost certainly. We're going to be setting up research and development teams over the next two years. Uh, teachers, our teaching staff, our principals, uh, to, to look into every area at all levels, the early, the primary grades, the intermediate, and the middle school grades, to see what areas we can take what we're doing now and use it as it is because it's working, in what areas must we adapt it, in what areas must we change it wholesale. Uh, when we look at phys ed, we might be looking at more of an outdoor type of phys ed requirement. Uh, there's an awful lot of emphasis. UNH has a, a big program on outdoor education. Uh, that's something that, is it appropriate at what grade level do we wish to change our PE program? Do we want to have groupings by ability? Uh, a lot of discussion on heterogeneous and homogeneous grouping, mixed ability or equal ability groupings. Is it appropriate to do it one way all the time? Is it appropriate at certain grade levels in certain subjects? This has to be looked at. And when a decision is made that we wish to group kids a certain way, we'll make sure that the teachers are equipped with the books and the training to handle that type of grouping. Uh, computer education, where do we want to start it? Uh, keyboarding, just the use of uh, the keyboard and what some of the keys mean. The earlier the better, so that the computer becomes a tool not for the teacher but for the student also. Exactly where would we start this and what would we do at what grade level? There will be a team of teachers who will be looking into that, looking into what has been done in other schools, what has succeeded, what has not succeeded. The use of technology uh, to help us. The social studies and science, uh, should our emphasis be on learning facts or should it be on learning process? Should our emphasis be on learning responsibility that, uh, that throughout the history of mankind we've made decisions and we've had to live with them at some point in the future uh, rather than the facts of what was done on a given year? Uh, should our emphasis be on how then did that affect the next 500 years. These are things, again, that we don't know that we're going to do, but we're going to look into. Life skills. Uh, should there be, perhaps at a middle school level, some emphasis on economics? What a checkbook is all about. We do that at various levels uh, to some degree already, but should that be a real focus? A credit card. When dad pulls out the piece of plastic, uh, does your child understand fully that a bill will come? And maybe there's a school in Florida that has set up within the school a, a whole system of financial arrangements uh, between kids who sell this, that, and the other thing. Homework, I assume they don't sell, but something like that. Should we do that? We'll look at that. We want to involve the community and, and stress the importance of learning that so often within the town uh, we hear an awful lot about sports but we don't see the recognition as much for, for the, uh, a student who has done well in academics. And that's a, an attitude that we have to address, and we have to bring the parents in and the, the town and the, the businesses to, to talk about schools and the importance of school and how it fits in. Uh, there's some general ideas we have to look at how we can fit them in. Adaptability. Uh, what we learn today may not be what we need tomorrow, and as much as we try and and foretell the future, we don't know. Uh, maybe we should look very closely at how we can train our children to be uh, adaptable. So when something new comes along, they don't have to know about it. They know that they can learn it. Um, the availability of information. Uh, it used to be that it was a real trick to go into a library and search out 
every little bit of information on a given topic, well, in the future, you're going to go to your computer and type in a couple of words, and references will pour through the screen telling you where to find it or even give you the information there. So that a skill in finding information may not be as important as a skill in sorting through it and deciding which one, what, what is good and what isn't. Uh, there are a wide, wide variety of areas that we're going to be looking at. We're going to set up research and development teams in each of these. The teachers have been asked as they go through their journals and see something of interest that's been done somewhere, cut it out, save it. And when the time comes, get it to the appropriate person. We're going to talk to other school districts who have tried things and see if they've worked and see if we can adapt them to make them better and fit into what we're trying to do. This is not a process that's going to happen overnight. It will take two years, maybe longer. We're not going to do it unless we do it right. And we can't do it right without the cooperation of the entire system, and that includes the town and especially the parents. We hope you will come to our meetings to ask questions, to give input. We hope you will continue to monitor what is going on with our 21st century project over the next two years. Uh, we cannot do this alone. We do not plan to do this alone. These tapes that we're making are just a, a small part of what we're trying to do in the way of get information out to you. The meetings are announced on Channel 30. They're in the Dairy News. Uh, please attend and have a good evening. A quick reminder for those of you who are not able to attend any of our meetings and have questions or comments about our 21st century learning community, if you'd put them in the mail, addressed to Superintendent of Schools, David Brown, 18 South Main Street, Derry, New Hampshire, 03038, and put on the outside of the envelope, 21st century learning community, we will try and answer those questions, perhaps in a program later in the year, where questions that have been sent to us will be answered via Channel 30. So again, any questions and you can't make the meetings, just send them to the superintendent of schools, 18 South Main Street, Derry, and we will make every effort to answer those questions, if not one-on-one, -on -one, certainly through Cable 30. Thank you.